So it's time for another video from my visit with Max Whitby, the element collector. Max makes real life periodic tables with real elements. And the thing I wanted to ask him was which elements are the most difficult to collect and display? Here's one of my favourites. This is osmium. Um, it's uh, the, one of the densest elements, arguably the densest element. It and iridium kind of have battles over which is denser, but it, it's around about 22 grams per cubic centimetre, so very dense. It's got a beautiful blue colour, um, but you only see that blue colour when it's actually a solid metal. And pretty much the only way you can actually buy osmium is, a, is as a powder. And so that powder's got two problems. First of all, it, it's not very attractive. It's like a grey powder. It could be anything. Um, so you have to melt it at very high temperature and uh, produce solid blobs of it. And then you can see it's beautiful, exquisite, slightly blue colour. I really love osmium's colour. The other difficult thing about osmium is that it oxidises. Um, and the, that oxide, or osmium tetroxide, is one of the most toxic substances you can find in an in organic laboratory. Um, and just to give you some idea, the amount of osmium that's here, if it was oxidised and produced um, osmium tetroxide, could potentially harm you know, thousands of people. Let me give you another example. Um, you'll be familiar with the marvellous fluorine gas. Um, you could almost say this is a logically impossible um, element sample to display since it attacks every known substance. Um, and just about the only thing that will keep it uh, contained is um, uh, dry, scrupulously dry quartz. So what we've got here is a quartz ampule that's been um, heated to uh, just under the melting point of quartz um, and then filled with a very low concentration of fluorine. I kind of think there might be a few molecules of fluorine left here, but between you and me, the likelihood is that they will have actually, by now, because this was made a year or two ago, they will probably have attacked the glass. But what we've tried to do is our very best to produce a sample of fluorine, and um, what more can you do? Um, and then a third element that uh, is quite a challenge, actually just a challenge to obtain, is uh, thorium. Again radioactive element, so it's encased in solid block of acrylic. Uh, there's about half a gram here. Um, well, well, one of the problems with thorium is simply obtaining it. And there are now very, very few places in the world where you can buy any. Um, even laboratory suppliers don't sell it. Um, I, I, I guess because of its association with nuclear technology, there probably was a systematic campaign by the world's authorities to make it unobtainable. Um, so we found it one of the most difficult elements to source in the periodic table. Another problem is that you need a pretty heavy-duty license to send it out of the country. Uh, we discovered this when we had a knock on the door one morning, and um, some nuclear police came and uh, asked us some questions. And uh, we've been really careful um, to read through this delightful book, which is the Dangerous Goods Shipping Regulations, uh, all 1,000 pages of it. And um, we made sure that when we sent thorium, we followed exactly IATA's instructions. You know, we got training, we went and did exams. Uh, but it turns out that in order to send thorium outside the UK uh, to Australia, which is a country that shocked us, I hope you don't know any Australians, um, you need a license. And so now, when we send, uh, send the samples overseas, we have to apply. It takes a couple of months, lots of forms to fill in. And uh, even for half a gram of thorium, you need an export license. Uh, francium is a difficult element. Um, there's you know, probably at any one time only a few milligrams or micrograms on the planet Earth. And the way we uh, provide it is uh, as a small lump of uranium ore. And if you do the analysis, there is an obscure side branch of the uranium decay chain, which means at any one time there is likely to be an atom or two of francium in that sample. Um, so uh, I wouldn't say you could actually see any francium, but at least you know there is some there. 